This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Our goal at Everyday Tech is to keep your technology not only working, but working for you. I'm the host, Abram Nanny, and you can join me and my friends Wednesday mornings at 10 on MPB Think Radio. Or search Everyday Tech on your favorite podcasting app or download the MPB Public Media app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Deep South Dining, the show all about the culture of Southern flavor and the folks that love to stir the pot. Good morning, Malcolm White with Carol Palmer. Today we are your host and your hopefully your kitchen helpers as we turn the calendar to 2024. With each change of that calendar, uh, it is a chance to s- start fresh and new chapters in your life in and out of your kitchen. To start the year off right, we will talk about creating good kitchen habits, must-have kitchen utensils, and what food trends you will want to try in 2024. Good morning. Welcome to Deep South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. Malcolm White, Carol Palmer, and Carol, it is good to see you again. We've been off a few weeks. And we are survivors. Oh, indeed we, are we are survivors of the holiday season, and we're here to prove it. <laughs> that's that's it. We survived the first week of 2024, survived the whole Christmas, New Year holiday, and we're here to tell about it. <laughs> Happy New Year, Java. Happy New Year, Carol. Yeah, yeah, Happy New Year. Everyone. I like saying Happy New Year on on January eighth. Yeah, we were off the last couple of weeks because, for whatever reason, uh, one Christ- was Christmas. Christmas and New Year's fell on a Monday. Yeah, so yeah. As as they fall, we fall off. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, we do. So, is everybody happy and in good spirits for the New Year? So oh, far, yes. so good. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus, good to you. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Santa Claus came to our house and dropped off many a presents for the good boy, for the good boy and girls. And, uh, you know, ate ate some sweet treats and uh, drank a little bit of Coca-Cola. Santa Claus at our house, he he has so much milk and cookies at the other houses. He wants, um, you know. Coca-Cola. Oh, you want to pop. (laughs) A little pick me up. It's a good thing. So how about black eyed peas? Yeah, we, you know, we did the non-traditional holidays. We did not do turkey dressing, uh, yams. We did not do black-eyed peas and greens. And, uh, you know, we went totally brunch on Sunday. I mean, brunch for, for Christmas morning. And then we did a big pot of soup, which I made for New Year's, which included black-eyed peas, greens, uh, uh, some some great meats and um, anyway, it was a great big old pot. In fact, I, I've, as I was telling you before we went on the air, we're finally cleaning out all the remnants of the holidays, getting them out of the refrigerator, and the soup was sort of the last thing to go. And uh, we'll talk much about refrigeration and refrigerators <laughs> yes, in we this will. show. Yes, you have uh, you have asked for and received. <laughs> <laughs> comments and uh, uh, much love from our cooking and coping page. And uh, exactly what did you, what was the challenge? What was the post? What was the call? Well, you know, before we went on hiatus, mm-hmm. I had spoken to you and said, you know, we should talk about some kitchen New Year's resolutions because I was already fomenting in my mind some things that. I need to change to make my life better. So we threw it out there to the community, and the community spoke. They heard with one voice or with many voices? No, many, many voices, um, many, many uh, resolutions, and some really great ones we're going to share this morning. All right. Well, uh, I know one of the things that you talked about was your refrigerator. You took a photo of your refrigerator. Very bold of you. That to, was very bold. To expose yourself like that. <laughs> but uh, you took a photo of your refrigerator, and and people began to uh, make comments and suggestions and uh, ideas about well, you know, kitchen it's, planning. It's, it's obviously a problem or it's a fact of life for many people. You know, I said that one of my resolutions was going to be better refrigerator management. Yes, that's right. 
And yeah. that was the can That's of worms. That's what started this whole... Or, or the can of old food right, right, that, right. Uh, you know, that opened. And then, you know, some people are very, very tidy and mm-hmm. have things all lined Organized. up. How Organized. about you, Mal? Well, let me say this. We have, first of all, <clears throat> we have a very good refrigerator, and I think that's important, and I'm not here to brag, but we're fortunate Why that, not? that we have this fabulous KitchenAid refrigerator with, with two doors on the top, two pull-out drawers, and a freezer that pulls out with multiple shelves in it. So I don't know the model. I just know that it's a really nice refrigerator, and it helps – uh, to keep organized because this refrigerator is organized. It comes this way. And the other thing is, and, and this is all about my wife, and that is snapware. We have a full drawer in our kitchen of plastic snapware. And so many things in the refrigerator go into these various sizes and shapes of snapware. And is that a brand? I think it is, and I believe she gets it at Costco. I'm not certain. But, you know, we our refrigerator is full of plastic containers as well as, again, I think it's a well-designed and well-laid And so th- those containers probably fit on top of each other. Yeah, and there are many different sizes and shapes. We have snapware at my home as well. They are they are great. I I I'm, I hate we're giving out brands, but it works. It yeah. works. It could be because you know I use anything. I mean I use yeah. I I try to um, yeah be very cognizant about reusing things that food you know food comes in. And oh, you better not crocker to, tubs not to, and yeah, the cool not to, tubs. Yeah, not <laughs> to throw away. And I have masking tape and I put it, but it it does. Cause. Well, we know, Carol, because we've seen the insides of your refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> You've I, exposed yourself. I loved the person, uh, actually, it was Lucy Mazzafero, who, who said, your oysters need more ice. See? I keep them in a you know, glass bowl and put, uh, you know, Not put enough ice, ice down on them. But there was, uh, yeah, the ice had indeed melted. But there were mm. there were so many good suggestions uh, for you know, for the new year. Yeah. And another thing I'll say, and this also sounds first world and, 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 you know, we don't have this, but this is one thing we talk about all the time is getting a used refrigerator and putting it in the basement as a backup. We don't have that. We have a singular refrigerator like most families and most Well, people. I will say it's not uncommon because we fall in this category to have the refrigerator and then have the deep freezer. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, you know, like that's that's even old grandmama's, you know, house yeah. got the deep freezer. You mm-hmm. need some, go get that meat at the deep freezer. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got two deep freezers. We live out in the country. We're about 20 minutes from a quart of milk or a loaf of bread. So I keep, you know, keep a pretty good, pretty good freezer. But our intentions uh, are to get a second used full refrigerator and freezer to pop in them to have down there for for other for extra items uh, because our refrigerator stays packed and it's very busy up there but one of the most interesting things on the list uh, yesterday was actually something Malcolm I had thought about a few months ago and wanted to share with you and um, that is I think we should introduce a condiment refrigerator to the world. Or at least a condiment section. And obviously this is a problem for a lot of people because our cooking today is based on so many different condiments and so many different flavors. And having all those jars and tubes is... You know, it it's a problem for a lot of people that that was repeated several different times. So, I think we need to get like one of those little old dorm refrigerators. Oh, the small ones, yeah. But they need Office it needs you know multiple shelves in it for but, condiments because condiment management is <laughs> is a real problem and particularly for people like you and I who've never met, met a, condiment a condiment that we, we don't, didn't like. Don't like. Right. But someone suggested <clears throat> using a vegetable drawer or a pull-out drawer for condiments. Yeah. And I actually did this not knowing that it was a good thing to do during Thanksgiving because I needed more space in the shelf. Mm-hmm. So I put, like, you know, all the pickles and harissa sauce Mustard, yeah, down it. And, that. you know, it, it's, yeah. I haven't gone back yet. Well, we have two sections of condiments, the the door on the right of the refrigerator and the door 
we have shelves, and then we have a plastic container also in the refrigerator full of condiments that fit down in this. So we have two sections in our refrigerator for condiments. Yes, you've condimentized. Condimentized. And hey, compartmentalized. Yeah, in some ways. You know what else today is besides Monday and the first day back from the holidays? It's Elvis Presley's birthday. Did you know that, Java? Yes, I did know that. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to steal, get one over him. And from Tupelo, Mississippi, on the phone, we have one of Elvis's step grandchildren. Chico Harris is on the phone. Hello, Chico. What it is, my friend? Y'all, I'll speak to you from the parking lot at Johnny's Drive In in East Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm waiting for them to open, and uh, as you know, that 89 years ago today, right here around the corner, about a block away, Elvis Aaron Presley came into the world. Yes, sir. So where else are you going to have breakfast, second breakfast, than Johnny's Drive In, which opens at 10 o'clock? Y'all were talking about condiments? <laughs> I brought my own condiments today. I, it's a Johnny's habit that I picked up from my mother. Um, we bring the packets of ketchup that you get at a fast food joint or something. Yeah. Because we get them out of the refrigerator. Because at Johnny's, they have the ketchup on the table, and me and Mom like it cold. I got you. That makes yeah, perfect sense. Own, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I brought my own special mustard just today because it's Elvis's birthday, and he was so special. Indeed, what sort of mustard? Uh, what sort of mustard rises to the occasion for Elvis's birthday? Uh oh. I think, I think that in Cleveland, I think it's kind of a commonplace mustard, but it's called stadium mustard. Ah, oh, so, oh yeah, okay. Oh, for a good, good ballpark good old mustard, ballpark yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Good choice. Well, we don't have a great uh, connection. Uh, I think the. Uh, uh, the cell service in Johnny's drive-in is a little weak today. But, Chico, we appreciate you. We appreciate you always reminding us of uh, Elvis and uh, of Tupelo, Mississippi, and the Hill Country. And uh, we appreciate you always working with us. But uh, during uh, the holidays, Carol uh, took a photo and posted it on our website, Cooking and Coping, and talked about refrigerator management. And, Carol, you got a lot of responses And you want to share some of those with us? Well, refrigerator management was just one of the resolutions. But I wanted to go back to our conversation about condiments. And one of our posters named Jennifer Bro suggested Lazy Susans in the refrigerator. And she said that that had made really a big difference for her. And several people chimed in on that. And so, of course, I went to the Internet and looked to see if there was there was anything special for refrigerators, and indeed there is. And uh, there were all kinds of Lazy Susans of all different heights that, you know, you can put on a shelf and, and put your condiments in. I love that. Oh, uh, and, and, and so are they all round like Lazy Susans? No, well, some of them have, make... have a square or a more square footprint. Hmm. But they do turn, I mean, they do. They turn within the square. Yeah, they take space, of course. Because what I was going to say is when dealing with geometry, the (laughs) the geometry of a refrigerator is all square. It's all rectangle, yes. Rectangular rectangular and square. So so you've got to deal with that. So putting an oval lazy Susan in a refrigerator might take up space that, you know would be wasteful. I don't know. Yeah, but I thought it was kind of a cool idea. No, I think it's a good idea. And I love pullouts. All these drawers that pull out and then have pullouts inside the drawers. This KitchenAid that we have I've had, got to come has see all this. of that. I've got yes, to come see it's this. very nice. Okay, I'm going to go over a few more resolutions. Uh, one of mine was cleaning as I go because I literally wreck a kitchen. I've cooking. cooked with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in your kitchen. Would you please tell these people that I keep a tidy house? It's just the kitchen. She keeps a tidy house. It's just a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but some people clean as you go, and I've watched my friend Nancy Campbell cook, and yeah, she is one of the best cooks in Jackson. But if yeah. she cooks, she has a little rag, and she 
yeah. wipes up as she goes. And, you know, I put that out as a resolution. And some people said, why? Why would you possibly do that? Well, and other people like Mary Pryor Sherman said, would you please talk to Joe Sherman? Yes, he's a great About cleaning cook, as you go. But please talk to him about his <laughs> waste. So I clean as I cook because I was trained in a commercial kitchen. You have no choice. In a, you cannot be leaving a mess in a commercial kitchen because there are other people in there working in shared spaces. So I learned to cook uh, in a commercial kitchen, and you had to clean as you went along. There was no choice. Tell me what that looks like to clean as you go. Say you're making soup and chopping vegetables. and. Well, I love those suggestions about chopping which vegetables to chop first, leaving the garlic and onions for laughs because – once they're on your cutting board and on your knife, you have to stop, discard the waste product, and wash them before you chop your carrots and your peppers and such. So one of those suggestions was start with the sweeter vegetables so you don't have to stop, wash your board, and start over. So you wow. chop your carrots and potatoes and peppers first, then your garlic and onions. Now, this is something that was... One of the suggestions. Well, this is a novel idea because I chop, the order I chop in is Is the by, order you cook in. No, it's by the order of what I like to chop. Oh, what you like to chop. Yes. I, I love to chop onions. Well, I always start with garlic and onions. Yeah, me. <laughs> always. So, but now I will tell you because That's this, recently I shared this on this show that someone had suggested to me grating the garlic. Yes. So I have started grating instead of chopping my garlic. And it is an easy, pretty, I mean, you have to still get the skins off. But and do you if, just hold the little piece of garlic and go... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Well, first of all, I use larger garlic. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you just like cheese or like carrots. Like on a microplane? Just on a, on a charader, on a vegetable grater. Wow. But anyway, so um, cleaning... Uh, as you go just means that once you've chopped and, and, you know, discarded, you clean up, start over with the next thing. Uh, when you're through using a utensil, you put it in the sink and or you go ahead and wash it and get it out of the way. One of the suggestions was don't let your sink get clogged up because once it's clogged up, everything just gets stacked on top of itself. So wash as true. you go because you're simmering on the on the oven, you might as well turn around, wash what you got, go back to the oven, keep an eye on it, put it in, the, you know, on top of the stove or whatever you're working on. But it's just, um, it's a habit that I formed early in my life, and uh, it works for me. Well, one of the good habits I formed in my life, and there are not many in the kitchen, uh, <laughs> is to, I have a, a separate rectangular little plastic dish I put in the kitchen, and that's where I put all my knives, because I learned at the Everyday Gourmet Cooking School over the 30 years. I had the Everyday Gourmet, do not leave knives in the sink. And I don't know oh. if you remember Chuck Allen, uh, who was a great member of our, our community, a photographer, but he would literally stop the class and yell at the assistant. <laughs> if any, because, you know, you cut yourself. Yeah, and you also, if around. you have good knives... I believe in never putting them in the dishwasher. That's so I right. keep mine in a little, you know, as I use them, I put them there and then and then hand wash uh, the knives. But back to other people's um, suggestions for Rusty Burwell, his re resolution is going to be it's the year of pizza and pizza dough. Mm. And he is one of our posters from Virginia, originally from Jackson. And. He pairs wine every week with his dinner, so I'm looking forward to seeing what wines he pairs with the pizza of the week. And then Bob Yarbrough, the Our famous, good friend Bob Yarbrough, the famous Bob Yarbrough, who I've never met in person, but he. But we is, know him like a brother. We do. He's a brother because we see his kitchen every day. His resolutions are to have more fun and make more pickles. I'm all into that. And I, that made me think that's, of think It's of here, here to, to Bob Yarbrough. Uh, I think somebody said they're going to eliminate unneeded gadgets. Well, speaking of gadgets, 
We have a caller who wants to talk about devices and gadgets, and it's Jim calling in from Madison. Hello, Jim. Hello, uh, Malcolm and Carol. This is Jim Sons in Madison. And hey, Jim. A, hey, Carol. Long time. Um, so here, first of all, thank you all for what you do. I love your program. But I had a question about vacuum packers. So, um, and I, I had a, uh, what I think is an interesting way that I came about owning a vacuum packer is I used to have insomnia. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd be on some shopping channel, passing time, and they'd be describing vacuum packer and how it can save food. And being a pecunious type of person, I thought, well, that's a great idea. And uh, I'd wake up in the morning with my credit card on the bedside table and wonder what I bought during the middle of the night. <laughs> um, actually, uh, that's, the reason I thought a vacuum packer was a good idea was that I already had a vacuum packer. <laughs> so I ended up with two vacuum packers. And uh, anyway, I found it was pretty good for saving leftovers and things like that. Uh, it was a little bit trouble at first, but I think the newer ones now are better. And I just wondered if either of you have had any experience with uh, uh, nocturnal purchases <laughs> or uh, uh, any problem with a vacuum packer. Or you, what do you think about vacuum packers in general? Well, about nocturnal pur- um, purchases. purchases. Mm-hmm. I'm dead asleep in the night, so I don't... You're not going to wake up and order something. I purchase during the day, but this is a very timely topic because one of the resolutions on my list was from one of our listeners and posters from Florida, Charlotte Duck Pelton. She's been on the show. Yeah, she's she's been on the show. She's a great cook, and she vacuum packs all of her proteins i'm sure she does vegetables too but she was talking about before going out and shopping go to your vacuum pack proteins that you've so carefully put up and i had not thought about that and it's interesting that you mention it because that's the second mention of the last 24 hours and yeah something i surely want to look into sure i mean that makes great sense well jim uh, i don't have a vacuum uh, packer uh, and i i I have not ordered anything at night online uh, and and forgotten about it since I quit drinking 19 years ago. So, <laughs> but before then, <laughs> well, uh, I resent the implication. <laughs> no, no, I'm speaking only of my personal experiences. So. Okay. Well, the, the thing I have found is I like to put up vegetables and uh, uh, so I can have them out of season particularly lady peas, which are my favorite. I know that's not a real manly uh, hobby. Oh, I, but I love like lady them. peas. Well, I think it's pretty manly. If there were more manly men like you, the world would be a better place with men <laughs> putting up lady peas. Yeah, and tomatoes. You know, I love I putting up tomatoes. Um, I can. I, I spend as much time as I can getting tomatoes in the freezer. I don't have a, a vacuum packer, but, you know, just a Ziploc is all I use. But your birthday's coming up. It is. I will sure. say from my experience, a vacuum packer comes in pretty handy because my father gifted uh, my family a whole heap of vacuum packed meats and uh, fishes um, and, and seafood and stuff for, for Christmas. Oh, so great. we have a freezer full of vacuum packed things from uh, the Claude Chapman School of Cooking. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. Well, Jim, thank you so much for listening and calling in. We appreciate it. And uh we will explore vacuum packing a little more detailed. You know, Malcolm, uh, Java gave us a few resolution mm-hmm. examples from the New York Times last week. I saw that. And those were very cool. And here we get a post from Suzanne Cole Sullivan on cooking and coping. And she said one of her resolutions was quoted in the New York Times resolutions. Well, there you I go. I don't know which one. We've got to go back and, and, and research that. But wow. Big time. We do have how to go many, back and research that. How many thousands of resolutions do you think the New York Times got? Yeah, I believe they, they got more more than their share. And yeah. for her to be quoted, now that, that was pretty cool. But the one of uh, re- resolution that I kept seeing um, from different places and on Cooking and Coping is to actually cook a recipe 
out of these wonderful cookbooks. <laughs> they keep coming out and everyone gets. I saw Vishwit Bot's um, cookbook mentioned by name from a cooking and coping poster. But just, you know, these cookbooks, we talk about them, we get them, we love the stories. But then when you ask people about, you know, they actually cooking a recipe out of it, it's like, oh, uh, I'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, somebody said they were going to cook a recipe out of Vish's cookbook every week. And... Wow, I would like to be at their house for dinner. No doubt. And, you know, also um, suggested or mentioned was learning a new skill uh, in the kitchen uh, and expanding one's palate, which that would be experimenting, using Mm -hmm. new recipes, new ingredients, and trying a new restaurant every week or month or so. Yeah, Most you are just good save, save up and go out. It can be high, it can be low. That was, yeah, we could fall into one. you know you fall into your favorites and the ones that you go to all the time. But um, like we had Eudora's on before the end of the year. That's a brand new restaurant. If you haven't been over there, you know, go try it and just you know just try out different restaurants. Yeah, yeah and here in Jackson, Amerigo opened in Fondren. They did recently. Heard good things. Got it. Got it. Where Babalu used to be. Yes. Yeah, but uh, back to your point about learning a new skill. Skill. In the cooking and coping post, there were a number of people that referred. You know, I, t- I said on my resolutions, biscuits, which I've had on resolution list for five years. You know, we've been to Alabama to try to learn, and people mentioned certain videos on YouTube. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know, you could put the video on your phone or on your your pad and and do it while you watch. And there's just this whole wealth of instruction out there. So if you want to learn a new skill, you don't have to go somewhere. You can YouTube do it in your University. own kitchen. Yeah, YouTube, <laughs> uni- YouTube University. All right. Uh, here are some of the uh, other suggestions uh, in terms of uh, the new year is to get a small serrated knife, which, you know, Carol, you and I have that uh, Victor, Victor Knox. Victor Knox. Victor Knox, which is a wonderful little knife that our friend Tim Pierce, Tim Pierce gave us. Uh, a deviled egg plate, something to get if you don't. Everyone have. should have a deviled egg. Every Southerner should have a deviled egg. Now, this egg one plate. caused some uh, consternation. Uh, many people said they had everything on this list, which is what every self respecting Southerner should have, according to Garden and Gun. The small serrated knife, the deviled egg plate, and then this one threw some people off. A corn scraper. You got a corn scraper? Well, I I do not. I sold them at the Everyday Gourmet for many years, and the corn scraper is a tool. It's like a long U-shaped thing with, with the hole in the middle, and you set it over the corn and push the hole down. I don't, I don't think I'm explaining yeah. it very well. The the ear down and do the corn, but to me it's an extraneous device because a good sharp knife. Well, there is does. a proper way to cut corn, yes. which is not one pass, but at least two and then scrape. Because exactly. the corn juice has to be extracted if you really want unless you're going whole kernel and you don't want the juice, the milk, yeah. the corn milk. And then you get more of the tip. Right. Correct. The next one, this is a pastry cutter, which I think is a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. It's that stainless steel, often handheld scraper that you can do a lot of different things with. Yeah, people call it uh, a bench scraper or pastry scraper, but I use one almost every day. You know, when you're chopping an onion, you just get your scraper and scoop it up and put it in the bowl. A citrus juicer. You know a lot about juicing. Yes. I'm, as you know, onto the flucer this flucer. year. Well, we've with, all which had Which is the a, a flat juicer, but everyone must have a citrus juicer. Okay. Dutch oven? Yes. Cast iron. If you are a southerner, cast <clears throat> iron or a an enameled cast iron. Rolling pin. Absolutely. A must. I have my grandmother's rolling pins. I'm sure you do, too. Mm, sadly not, but oh, I have sorry. her cast iron skillet. There you go. Oyster knife. Now, this interested me. I saw this in Garden and Gun because so many people in the South live in non-water regions. Why would an oyster knife be essential, Malcolm? 
I well, mean, where are you going to get whole oysters? At, at in the fish, mountains of the Tennessee? fishmonger, at the fish, the seafood place. Okay. I don't, you know, it's nothing wrong. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's small. You know, it's a novel thing to have. Okay. I, I okay. think it's an. Ex- I understand it's, it's kind of a, an extra. Yeah. And if you don't ever shuck oysters, you don't need an oyster deep knife. On the list myself. But grease jar. Southern bacon grease. On the, on the stove. I never believed in storing bacon grease until I started living in the country and making cornbread all the time. And the biscuit cutter. Absolutely. A biscuit cutter can do many things, not just biscuits. Someone said that one of their resolutions was to clean out their biscuit cutter uh, inventory. They had that so was many. Joe Sherman, and that was cookie cutters. Cookie cutters. Sorry, Joe. He he's a big, big cookie, yeah. you know, cookie guy. But you know, biscuit cutters are the perfect tool for our little tomato sandwiches in the summer from Mississippi. Yes. So the Vicksburg tomato sandwich. Yes, doesn't have to be a biscuit. The cutter doesn't know. No. And finally, a cast iron skillet. Agreed. Which I worked on mine last night. Kara cooked a pot roast with this marinade that was um, sweet. Uh, It was a watermelon uh, pepper. I think it was a jam or jelly, but she decided to marinate it, the pork tenderloin in it, and then cook it in it. And so it crusted up pretty heavily in my black skillet. So I had to spend some time chipping away. And cleaning up and then re-seasoning, oiling, heating, cleaning my cast iron skillet, which was my grandmother's cornbread skillet. Okay, go through the process for us of, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there would. Yeah, th- there's would like a lot of this. opinions about how to treat cast iron. Some people say you never wash it. You just wipe it out, clean it out. I actually wash mine quickly in some warm water and, and soap and and then wash it out, and put it on the stove and heat it up to dry. And once it's dry, I drop a little olive oil in it, take a paper towel, swirl it all around, and re-season it for the next use and before I store it, and I let it cool down. That sounds good. You know, washing cast iron is a very controver- controversial It's dangerous. Subject. You, have it to is. Be, you can't, like, put it in the sink and to soak. No, no. No. It'll rust there was, up on you. There was a post a couple of years ago about... A woman whose fiance put her cast iron skillet in the dishwasher. D I V O R C. They weren't even married yet. So she said, What should I do? And people were saying, Don't marry him. Don't marry him. Forget him. And then other people said, which I believe, how kind of him to clean up the kitchen and to even know that you have a dishwasher. So. Give him a break. Two sides of cast iron. Yeah. Deep South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. Well, Carol, uh, here it is uh, early January, but I don't think it's too soon to think about Mardi Gras. Oh, no. Now, we all love Mardi Gras, big in Mobile, big in New Orleans, big in the Missis- along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But uh, along with Mardi Gras and the celebrations comes the king cake and i don't know about you but my internet inbox is just being flooded with chatter about king cake and fa- king cakes and in fact when we had robert st john on the other week he he talked about his favorite king cakes and his his search for the perfect king cake for loblolly bakery his new bakery in hattiesburg right so just the teaser, we're going to delve into the king cake and how it is, in my view, more and more making its way north. It used to be, if you were interested in a king cake, you had to go to New Orleans. Or order one from or, Paul's Bakery or in, from somewhere. In, uh, that's right. But now uh, they're moving north, and they're in Jackson, they're in Hattiesburg, they're all over the place, and people uh, have a real opinion about the best king cake in New Orleans. They They argue about which is the best. There's been a lot written about it. Eater, New Orleans Eater, had a whole piece this past week. I think you and I were chatting about that, about the king cake. So we're going to talk about the king cake at an upcoming, on an upcoming show. I think show. it's a great idea, and Malcolm, you know how I believe in research. I think it would be a worthy thing for you and Java and me to taste some king cakes. What yeah. do you think, Java? Important. I think it's in, all in the name of good research. Yeah. Yep. It's and our we, job. And we do it for the people. I mean, don't think that, that you know, this is work. 
It has to be done. All right, we've got a caller from Tupelo. Uh, Kathy is calling in about an old World War II cookbook. I can't wait to hear about that. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. How are you? Um, I, I am doing well, fairly well. Uh, I have a lot of cookbooks, and I've been going through them to give some to my daughter. And I found one that she's not going to get right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, family Fair Food Management and Recipes, Home and Garden Bulletin. This is the number one cookbook, U.S. Department of Agriculture. And I went online. I didn't get all the information, uh, uh, but I did just jot down some things. Uh, it was a part of a World War II National Nutrition Program, uh, and it dates from 1917 to 1960. Oh, boy. The book cost 25 cents. Wow. Well, that's a treasure, and you are right to hang on to it and to explore it and digest it and get to know it. I'll tell you, when you, when you are ready to let it go, if and when that happens, the University of Southern Mississippi has um, an extensive cookbook collection and at their library, at their, at their special collections uh, at their library on campus. So if you ever want it to have a home where it will be preserved forever for any and all to uh, enjoy, that would be a good place. And that's for any of our listeners who have a vast cookbook collection that you're trying to uh, to whittle down or to shorten or to make smaller. Uh, University of Southern Mississippi, uh, the uh, library special collections uh, has started a collection of cookbooks and they're primarily focused on Mississippi, the South. But Others are welcome as well. Well, Kathy, thanks so much for sharing. Have you yeah. used any of the recipes yet? Uh, no, but at the beginning of it, it's got, you know, different, uh, let me see, why storing, uh, smart buying, serving in pounds, and then toward the back. Uh, and it, well, it tells, um, it's got all kinds of information that uh, people can just start out learning then recipes like uh, bean sausages, lima beans and tomato sauce, spaghetti and cabbage mm. with cheese sauce. Mm. Those are some good old-timey uh, dishes there. Yeah, and Those lima beans in, with tomatoes. Oh, I love that yeah. dish. This book is in not excellent condition, but good condition. Good. Well, thank you so much for uh, listening, Thanks, for calling. I enjoy your program. Well, we appreciate uh, folks uh, who listen regularly and call in and share things that are going on in their their kitchens and in their lives um we've got kathleen uh calling from osaka kathleen how are you what's going on well i'm having a good laugh and enjoying y'all today good that's <laughs> yeah, why we're I here have, i've been telling people for years use your ice cube trays Just get them frozen put the you stock one in there and put it in the uh, container in the refrigerator and don't forget to put a date but you can use those little, they're dots, I call them, or uh, circles that you put on paper, paperwork, different right. colors. Mm-hmm. I have some color-coded, like pink for pig and you know, red for beef, and I've ah, got it all in there. you got yourself a system. But I use, yes, I do. Crazy as it must be. I've been called anal before about that, but they don't cook. I do. There you go. <laughs> and that's uh, interesting to I mention don't. ice cube trays because... On Twitter a few weeks ago, they somebody posted a photograph of an ice cube tray and said, what is this? What is this? I saw that. And, <laughs> you know, what's so funny about that is it's now we have a whole generation of people that think ice comes out of the refrigerator door or in the, hmm. you know, automatic bin. They don't know that crunch right. of the tray. pulling the metal ice tray. Which are impossible to find, but the, <laughs> but the plastic ones you can still you. find. I wanted to tell you all about the little square. Um, it's kind of like a little tray, but it's about six inches deep. You can find it in most of your little dollar stores and stuff like that. And you, a lot of people use them for cosmetics and such. Well, I have one for Chinese or Oriental accessories like soy sauce, plum sauce, and, you know, sesame seeds. So if I'm cooking Chinese, I just pull that out. Ah. And I have one for Mexican, the different sauces and the the chips. And whatever. I just pull that out. You have an international but, system. Yes, I do. In fact, I'm not lying, y'all. I probably have five, six hundred cookbooks. 
wow. and have a bookcase that takes up most of this wall, and they're by uh, International. I have two shelves of French, <laughs> one shelf of Americana, of seafood, and it's quite amazing. People go, do you read this? It's own shelf. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's my hobby. Yeah, and it uh, keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> we certainly understand that, and uh, we are, we're big cookbook readers. We thank you so much for listening, Kathleen, and thank you for calling and share, sharing your thoughts about those ice cube trays and uh, your cookbook collection. We appreciate you. But moving on to the new year, Carol, uh, a lot of people are talking about some of their uh, meat swaps uh, instead of cutting back on meat, as it were, using jackfruit instead of chicken or pork and trying beans and lentils instead of ground beef and sausage. And, of course, the f- almost now famous cauliflower steak, that, that which yeah. I love. Do you, do you do that one? No, but I, I want to. In it's fact, I saw core. some over yeah. the weekend posted. Yes, I love a cauliflower do steak. Do you put it in your cast iron you or do you put it on a, a grill? Grill broil a little Uh, olive oil yes Mm -hmm. like a steak you treat it no differently than a steak and uh, the first time i had it was at kate and it was really i mean the cauliflower saganaki he did the cauliflower steak with uh, a cheese on it Mm -hmm. just absolutely wonderful fabulous Uh, let's see also using eggplant uh, more uh, and chicken. One of my favorites. I, I love mean, an eggplant. Egg, eggplant is so diverse. Mm-hmm. All right, some great habits uh, to think about forming in the upcoming year. Arrange your grocery list by category and skip backtracking through the store. Now, that's a shopping tidbit, Carol. Yes, that's a resolution. Mm-hmm. It's a cho- we yes, have now entered the realm yes. of resolutions. Yes, we have. Uh, free small portions. Divide the dish into single servings for easy defrosting and short order meals. Efficiency. Efficiency. And here's one I love. Keep a prep bowl by your work area to corral things like onion skins and carrot tops. You know, when you're chopping, uh, things that clog up your cutting board. And I'll tell you, for over a year now... I have been doing that and then saving the scraps. I bought a little bin that I keep by my sink, and I trade out kitchen waste, food waste, Mm -hmm. every week with Neil Strickland in Raymond, and he picks up my bags of cuttings for his— To recycle. Mm -hmm. He has a giant— compost pile i call it a viking ship that he does that and then i trade that out for eggs from his chickens and we mentioned early this sweet to smelly Mm -hmm. chopping scenario when chopping vegetables whole items like onion and garlic for last you don't have to wash the cutting board in between chopping so many things mal so many things okay you got some new york times resolutions uh from the lady from this one the lady from mississippi yes while we were on on break, uh, I went on the New York Times cooking website to find Suzanne Cole Sullivan's resolution that was published. And not only was it published, it was the first one published. And uh, the editor who did this story said she was very moved by this note from Suzanne. So I will read it. Okay. I'm still forming my dreams and goals for 2024, but I'm heavily inspired by my friend Jessica. Her 2023 resolutions were as follows. Eat as many different shapes of pasta as possible over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. Try a new fruit every month. Wow. And smile at every child she saw. I'm leaning into the idea that resolutions can be silly side quests that just exist to wedge more joy into my life. Right on. That's wow. Good. That's, that's very good. No that wonder is, the New York Times published it. Yeah, that's... It's well put. That was well said. I'm, <clears throat> wow. <laughs> now, we promised uh, to touch on food trends for 2024, the ones that we have gleaned early in the year here. Because we're on top of these things now. Well, we try to be. We try to be. So you want to share uh, some of these trends, uh, Carol, that we are? Well, I have a question about Go the ahead. trends. Have, have, have you guys had any um, swicy food yet? 
Swicy. Give go, it to us, Java. Explain. Come on. Come on. Give it to us. Swicy, well, sweet, and spicy? Yeah, the sweet and spicy um, like sriracha? trend is, is really, really big. I mean, you know, people like sriracha and uh, different hot sauces and stuff like that. Chili and, oil. Yeah, mm. but they're starting to combine them in different ways with different sweet things. So you can even find, like, hot chocolate uh-huh. out there on the marketplace and <clears throat> you know chili flakes and things that you may not have thought they could be combined in so what do y'all feel about sweet and spicy foods i feel really good about yeah, sweet I'm and spicy about food it. because i'm love, coming in hot yeah i'm coming in <laughs> hot too now but i'm coming in hot and sweet i have always been attracted to asian foods mm-hmm. and Asian foods like Thai, you know, hit like five different taste centers, you know, bitter, sweet, salty, spicy, yeah. and as you know, some people call it a party in your mouth. Yeah. But That's what Dr. John yeah. said about Kentucky, I mean about uh, Popeye's fried chicken. Back it's, in the day, he cut the spot. He said, there's a party in your mouth. So that's where it that's I say that all the from. time. It comes from Dr. John doing, okay. doing a Popeye's commercial. So why not spicy? I'm all for it. I'm all for it. In fact, the, the substance that Kara marinated the pork tenderloin in last night was this. It was a watermelon chili... I would call it a jelly or a condiment that she used to use on the pork tenderloin. It was really great. That it worked sounds out nice. You know, you were cool and didn't even know it. So <laughs> tell her she's swicy today. Okay, how about this snacks for dinner? This grazing charcuterie board and even the now extremely popular girl dinner. Carol? You know, I think that idea of girl dinner is... It's just kind of a stupid thing. Oh, I mean, okay. to call it a girl dinner, what it really is is a charcuterie plate. Small, just small, small, small bites, and mm-hmm. you know that that's big at our house. Because it says here, it's easy likes, way easy way to use up your uh, and reimagine leftovers by placing a variety of these bites on a serving tray. But it's not just for girls. Okay. It's for everybody. Of course it is. Including John Palmer, who makes these beautiful, that's what he wants for supper, is you know a little piece of cheese, a little piece of mm-hmm. pate, a couple of oysters, a sardine, or you know tuna, a little mound of tuna, a fig. And by the time you add it all up, it's a big dinner. And a couple more real quickly. More third culture cuisines, the mixing, uh, like uh, Dale Gray's book, uh, south of somewhere, Vicious book, you know, mixing Southern with India. Uh, anyway, and less alcohol, uh, you know, the beverages nowadays, the mocktails are quite the rage. But anyway, there are more, and we will get to them uh, as time goes on. Deep South Dining is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting's Think Radio. We're funded by generous contributions from the good folks like yourself, and we thank you. Our show is produced by Java Chapman. For Carol Palmer, I'm Malcolm White. We ask that you now stay tuned for Marshall Ramsey's program, Now You're Talking, followed by Southern Remedy at 11. And we ask that you join us each Monday and each Sunday morning at 9 for more Deep South Dining, heard only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.